Okay, going to do an unpowered walkthrough of the JB2000 two-piece with the uh, big toroid uh, transformer. So just an unpowered walkthrough of this amplifier. Um, um, on the front, everything's labeled. Uh, tune and load on the output. Um, this one has a variable bias. Um, AMSSB, that's just a delay for the uh, relay um, because this amp has a auto keyer along with the foot switch. It's got a Nomad um, keying circuit or auto keyer uh, board in it that will, uh, when on, it will uh, key up the relay when it senses RF coming in or drive coming in. Uh, Normally, I think some of the black hats, like the the 2000 1011 and the 2006, had a um, auto keyer in it, and the the ham version, the black hat JB2000 1080, 10 through 80 meters, had a foot switch. Whereas this one now has both um, the foot switch, or you can put the uh, auto keyer on. There's a switch in the back for the auto keyer. And if you have the auto keyer on, uh, you can use AMSSB, and that just puts a little bit of delay on the relay with the auto keyer. Um, since this is a two piece, uh, you can turn the high voltage on separately with that. Um, so you can let the tubes warm up and, and filaments on and everything else on, um, you know, ready to go. And then when you're ready for the high voltage, just turn the high voltage on and that will activate the um, separate power supply over there. Main power switch and then the meter switch for um, RF. IP is uh, current and EP is voltage. Um, so that's basically it on the front of this beast. Um, and then going over the top. Oh man, getting up. This is um, laid out very simply, a lot easier to lay out when you have the uh, transformer and then the uh, diode board there, or the high voltage power supply diode board there. Um, kind of interesting the way I did it though, diode board on one, in the power supply and then the caps in the RF, but there's a specific reason I did that. Um, if I had ran just the um, high voltage out over here and had the diode board over here I would have had to run two high voltage lines uh, you know one for positive and negative as they you know for AC but since I um, got the diode board on this side it's going to be rectified uh, AC um, well not really AC rectified DC I don't know pulsing DC um, lots of words on that tongue tied but anyway, just one high voltage line and a ground since it's uh, rectified so I don't have to run two high voltage lines. So that's why I did that. And then over here is the uh, cap board um, for it that uh, smooths out that, um, that positive um, AC if that don't make sense either. But anyway, uh, basically the, the tubes and the simple tank circuit with nothing extra just what you need for you know mono band 10 through 12 meters only is what this amp is set up for so you got your three five hundred z's your your plate caps your parasitic uh suppressors those are nice got a nice um plate choke that's factory in it um that capacitor there grounds any extra uh, rf that's trying to sneak through the plate coat choke and that plate choke also brings in the DC and blocks the RF. That's the purpose of that. And then this um, blocking capacitor here does the opposite. It lets the RF go through but blocks the DC. So, you know, these two kind of do the same thing but just opposite. This one lets DC go through to the tubes and blocks the RF. That one lets the RF go through and blocks the um, DC. Um, this choke over here is a safety choke. You'll see a lot of smaller amps don't have that choke. It has nothing to do with the output, even though it's uh, connected to the um, load or the output capacitor, right? Um, but that choke there, that safety choke does is if this 
blocking cap here and that's what it's called uh, let's go if it shorts out and it happens from time to time because this cap has the uh, DC and the RF on this side and it only lets out the uh, RF on that side but if this thing shorts right all that high voltage that you know 2700 volts is what this one runs on um, if this thing shorts all that high voltage is going to come over here to the to the uh, caps and the um, coil and then out and then into your coax to relay everything else and that would you know possibly kill somebody having the 3000 volts go you know out to coax you know and to the radio and you know to the mic and anything else right that it can get a hold of so what happens is that choke um, blocks RF it's invisible to RF so no RF can go through the choke just like this one right this one lets the DC you know through but no RF can go through it backwards and this is the same thing um, even though it's not any DC it's invisible to RF RF cannot go through that choke you know the way it's designed so if it's only RF as it's supposed to come in um, you know through the uh, tank coil or, or circuit you know you're tuning all your RF up so that's good it's invisible as long as it's RF but uh, if that thing lets go in shorts now you got DC coming over here and that thing will uh, take the DC you know because it's a choke you know it's a coil so if you got DC coming in through here it's gonna ground it right out and since you got a dead short grounding out that DC it should blow the fuse in the power supply right or take out the power supply that's a safety thing if it wasn't there again and that shorts that DC is going all over the place where it ain't supposed to go it might kill somebody um, cooling fan if I wouldn't get there this one has a bunch of diodes in it and that's what I use for the um, bias um, each diode will be about 0.7 volts a bias going in there and that's why you see a bunch of them to make about um, I think about 12 volts total but then it's switchable using that uh, switch right there you can switch in you know low bias high bias and all of that so um, your um, high voltage capacitor bank those are 500 volt caps each and that's why I can get away with just using six of them so those, those are whole 3000 volts there um, and then this is just a um, filament transformer only um, because that big bad high voltage transformer there doesn't have the right voltage and current to run the filaments for the three 500 Z's you know 500 Z's run at I think 5 volts at 15 amps each so for a pair you need 5 volts at 30 amps we actually think at Black Hat they have the filament voltage in series so you need um, 10 volts at 15 amps and that certainly don't have that so that's why you got a separate filament transformer and one of the reasons I went with the two-piece is you know somebody told me that uh, you can't use a toroid um, or it's no good for this amplifier they were looking for a high voltage transformer for their Black Hat JB2000 it's a common problem with just about all Black Hats is they kind of use an undersized transformer it's great if you run them right they're set up for low dead key and high swing um, all the Black Hats I can think of but what people do is they, they run them too hard you know higher dead key or even higher swing and they run them harder than they're supposed to and since that transformer is undersized anyway all the way from JB12s to JB2000 if you run them hard you blow the tranny you know it's one of the first things that blow so it's a common problem to have a black cat with a blown transformer so the guy was asking um hey what transformer do I need you know what can I use and I said you could use that toroid here and I sent him the information for it and uh, this was Facebook and he emailed me back and said ah that won't work that's no good my tech said that that, that won't work and I said yeah it will he was like, you ever use one? And I went, um, not on this yet. And he's like, well, you're an idiot. You know, my tech says it don't work and my tech is great and all this other stuff. And I'm like, <laughs> calling me an idiot. I said, your tech's an idiot. And of course, that guy went ballistic after that, right? So um, 
anyway um, I ordered the transformer because when I needed it or I thought I needed it and you know after I ordered it and buy it that's 250 bucks right I find dig through my pile of goodies and I found a bunch of plate transformers that are working this thing but anyway I had already already ordered it so I'm like I might as well use it right um, so going underneath this thing uh, that little transformer there just runs the uh, low voltage basically the, uh, the um, automatic key in circuit there and I think the relay runs off that low voltage there so uh, it's got three transformers in it the low voltage and then the uh, filament in this one and then the high voltage over here um, you know on off switch some more switches what was that the high voltage on and uh, the meter switch the underside of the capacitor bank those um, small gray resistors there are um, equalizing slash bleeder resistors there you know uh, do two jobs they bleed off the um, the voltage and plus uh, they're across each cap and they're uh, the same value um, high percentage you know accuracy resistors so they're all you know the same value and they bleed off um, well no they equalize the voltage on each capacitor when the high voltage power supply is on that way one capacitor doesn't you know draw more uh, voltage or more power than another capacitor those are equalizing resistors and that when it's on and then when you turn it off they're bleeder resistors they uh, bleed off the power so dual resistors dual purpose resistors there uh, high voltage fuse added I don't like the way this fuse is on there with all that high voltage uh, um, unshielded and, and that long run there so I'll probably redo that with a different type of fuse holder and shorten that up and cover that up too but anyway uh, that there is factory dropping resistors from the high voltage to the meter so the meter can read voltage you know the meter runs off about one volt and the high voltage is about 2700 volts so those resistors take that 2700 volts down to about one volt so the meter can read it and then this resistor there that black one on top that's a um, B minus a dropping resistor so it can read um, current one of these days I'm gonna do a one on um, how a voltmeter which you know these meters are they actually read volts can read current they use a dropping resistor like that calibrated dropping resistors and they actually uh, read volts but it's calibrated for the current because the current and the um, using ohms law the current and the voltages and ohms are all locked in you know but anyway that's another story that's for the low voltage you know to rectify that and you know that 12 volt AC coming out there using the diode and the cap to make it about um, you know 15 DC to run the um, that's the Nomad Kian circuit. And that's the um, input coming there from the coax, Nomad Kian circuit. Um, that's the filament choke with the center tap. So the filament AC goes through that choke and then uh, into the tubes. And the center tap takes the bias um, through that choke into the tubes and then uh, that capacitor there has your RF coming in when you're keyed down into the tubes um, common um, key in relay or antenna relay and then this over here this is not factory this is your input tuning circuit this has a uh, a variable choke and two variable resistors so you can tune the tune and the load and the choke and with that I was playing around with it I could get the um, input SWR down to 1.0 immeasurable because uh, I can tune all three on this one um, and that's basically it you know um, to this and then over here You know, on top, you just have the um, high voltage transformer. This has two 950 volt um, 
output windings. So you could use it for a voltage doubler or you can put them um, in series and use a full ray bridge. The original amp used a smaller transformer with a voltage doubler. So it was a really weak undersized circuit, but this one got the big bad uh, toroid um, full ray bridge. That's the bridge. Those white resistors are like glitch resistors. So if I got a big short or you know anything uh, shorts out, it should take out those glitch resistors and not short out the um, the um, big uh, toroid transformer and that's about all it is on top and then last we're going to turn this guy over it's not a lot underneath and that's a better shot of the um, full way bridge circuit and basically under the, other than wiring and the tournament will strip this just you know wiring of it um, just one fuse right there it's set up for 110 uh, solid state relay what is that uh, 100 amp? 90 amp. 90 amp solid state relay. Because um, basically, you know, when you turn on a big amp like this, there's a lot of surge current. Um, you know, I was talking to somebody else, you know, about the Drakes, and it's known that the Drakes have a dual switch. Uh, two switches on one assembly, and that switch is, uh, dual switch is hard to find. And what happens over time, you turn keep turning on the amp, and that switch has the full brunt of that, you know, turn on surge and it kills the um, kills the switch. And it's not a good idea to have the full power, you know, come in and run into a switch on the front panel too, right? That's it works, but it's not the safest thing. Whereas if you use a relay and this one's just a solid state relay like this one, um, basically the switch, which is ran on DC. When you turn on the switch, it turns the DC coming into the solid state relay and it turns on the solid state relay and the solid state relay turns on the power. So the, the relay is going to take the brunt of all that power coming in um, instead of the switch. And that's about it to it down here, right? So anyway, that's going to be my walkthrough of the um, JB2000. Uh, I call it my 2000 plus. And basically, um, I did this one because of um, challenge accepted, I call it. You know, the guy said, a Tory won't work and, you know, called me an idiot and I didn't know what I was doing and, and all that stuff. By the way, this is a Phantom 500 chassis. That was there before I got it. And other than that, it was clean. But they took all the sockets and parts and all these this stuff out the chassis. And the guy just gave me the chassis. Like, you want it? And I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. Why not? I might need a chassis one day. So I just used this big chassis because it was one of the things that would fit that big toroid transformer. All right. That's going to be it for this one. Bye.